today was our gaming day with Whoop, not G Whoop, but Whoop. I've been saying that all this time wrong for over a year. <laughs> and we also had um, social emotional learning and gaming practice with Chris Aviles from Garden State Esports in New Jersey. And also we talked about, um, and my friend will appreciate this, um, um, James O'Hagan and his talk with his parent, uh, his, uh, the student and his parents in starting a program at his school. So feedback overall today, thought. I am totally blown away. I have had a blast. Bradford, this organization that you have done is, is blown me out of the water today. I am excited and very thankful. Uh, one thing I really got from today was uh, two major things. One, he, he really showed how the coaching aspect of esports like you know we all might be you know really good gamers or proficient at specific games as ourselves as players because we've been you know might have been playing for a while but it doesn't necessarily mean we know how to coach or and he also showed vice versa even though you might not necessarily be an immaculate player you still have the ability to sit back and analyze see what you know especially if you do have game knowledge you know you might not necessarily be able to perform to that high level but you know what to look for what to you know write down what notes to bring to your kids and uh also just the fact that we are able to have that hands on to a game um and see like you know in, in, incorporate that see how it is to be part of a team what things that we lack like him saying that we needed to communicate more uh set up positions map analysis that's a major thing especially when you come to things like mobas so um i thought that was really great yeah the greatest thing i got from it um is the platforms that we do have and how we utilize those platforms and those resources um the group is so good i just see it as beginning warming up for the class maybe in an assessment with your memorization skills because it gives you so much data and feedback um as far as coaching yeah i, I think this is great we need to do it a, little, a lot more because um i challenge myself uh, constantly over the times to help like seven year olds eight year olds play this type of game but you have to know how to talk to them you have to because they have it to where you can play side by side with just the ball but you have to know how to position yourself pass off the ball and then you have to kind of help them not get frustrated because it is so these games sometimes are so overwhelming to the younger students that um just giving them something to play will frustrate them um, but having that adult next to them to kind of guide them, um, we we got we got to practice at it. And I I challenge myself. I do that all the time. I try to practice myself to talk to a younger kid because I don't want them to throw it away, but I want them to play it. I want them to do it. Um, like when they come into my room, you know, they they see the robotics and it's like this is too complex. I can't do it. Well, I look at a map and I start doing mapping and analysis. This is your role. This is where you need to be. <laughs> and then they start to see this is where I fit. This is how this is how I'm gaining the skills and the knowledge to 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 play this type of game. And then basically they start to compete because once you get a kid that says I can't do it, that means that they're scared to compete. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to be scared to compete. I want them to have that want to have that Bible edge to themselves to um, you know to do it. But yeah, I think this is great. I hope we can have more things like this. And set it up to where uh, you know we can help each other utilize those coaching skills and like get better at coaching and, and we can try you know different things on different days and look how quick it was it was very quick and yeah, I'm not it was lie. very quick and it will work it will work yeah. in our school setting it's it's so very quick but it starts to it showed like we're not talking enough but maybe because we never played together with each other we don't even know our positions and our roles yet um, but stepping back and then just mapping it out. And then um, I tried it before, reviewing a film. Reviewing a film That opened up so many just opportunities for kids. Because when I turned on a film, like, this is what y'all did yesterday. <laughs> they didn't even know that I filmed it. And it was um, it was amazing because they start to feel like it's structured to this. And it's, 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 it's meaningful for them to say, hey, man, you really reviewed our film. You really, you really took us through it. Yeah. You know, working on getting better. Hey, I just enjoyed it all. Uh, 
I, I'm having technical uh, issues, but and that was my first time actually seeing the game two rocket launch. I've never seen it before, so I'm excited. I'm I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, and the one thing I appreciate, and I'll talk about the other two guys in a minute, was Chris's honesty throughout this whole entire process. Like even as we went into the screenplay, and he he said, you know, none of y'all were talking. I can't lie, that was a punch in the gut. But like, I mean, I took it as a, a champ because what he established in the very beginning, what the space was. Remember I talked about in the very beginning, this is the space, this is how we're gonna collaborate, this is how we're gonna talk. So when he said at the end, okay, y'all weren't doing this, y'all weren't doing that, he wasn't jamming it at us. It was like, okay, now I know what I need to do next time. Now I know that even when uh, Tommy scored, you know, I need to be cheering her on. Or when um, Javon said, hey, nobody's, we need to probably put somebody here. We need to talk about those things. Communication is key. So like he was saying those things because he simply said, this is what I saw. And the biggest thing that I got out of it was, this wasn't about gaming. Yeah, we were playing a game, but this was like what we do in the classroom. Student A, this is this is just what I saw. This doesn't mean that you have to be an expert or have a degree to do this. I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm coming to you uh, in a friendly, safe space because we've established this space and I want to make sure that you succeed. And so that made me feel a lot better. Um, with a, this whole day, even though it was about the, the gaming part of it, I felt with um, Gavin coming in with uh, Jiwoo, I'm not gonna even lie to you, that I think set that up for the uh, Rocket League practice that we did. I think that really helped, even though I was all over the place, running around with um, <laughs> my car, that standard of here's how you look at this and warm up and then go to, go to this, that helped um listening to james o'hagan and interview both of the georges and us talking about establishing a program and we keep talking about policies and standards and this 14 year old kid with the support of his parents hey we're just gonna do it i just need the support i think when we discuss those things i i could see all of y'all's your eyes and expression go all right this isn't as complicated as it really is. If number one, if, the, if this 14 year old kid and his supportive parent can do this, um, it, I can do this. And remember the biggest thing that I said in the beginning, we, that James O'Hagan, and I know James O'Hagan will, will DM me this later. He didn't label what type of kid th this was. He didn't say he was a GT kid, a failure kid, a this type of kid. He didn't say what type of school it was. He just labeled the kid as, I want to start a program and I want to lead it. And I have a supportive parent. Let's get started. And y'all know I said in the beginning, that is our big shtick. We always want to put, I want, I want this type of kid in this type of school to run this type of program. And that is our biggest problem. We always want to label this type of kid and this type of parent and this type of student to help run our organization. James's podcast did not say that. And that's what made it comfortable. Um, I'm getting on my soapbox and I do apologize, but even the Do Dr. Miles Harvey, um, y'all's concern there was, what does our space look like? We talked about that all day today. Like we have all these lights, cameras, Tommy, your nice, pretty background there. Um, Javon, your background as well. Everybody has all of this stuff built up, but the true concern is how do we get there? That costs a lot of money. I don't even know if my administrator is going to give me that. And the concern is our students don't feel like they're successful unless they have these things and it's real talk um we i've always said you know you don't need these things you don't need it uh to get started but the real conversation is this is what makes our students walk taller because of where they're at and where they come from so it is a conversation but when i showed y'all dr miles harvey's picture of 
it looks like a classroom. He, he, it's very simple. It's not overwhelming. Um, Tim, you said, I can, we can just get Christmas lights. I can get a regular microphone. Uh, the kids can just bring their consoles and it looks normal. It doesn't have to look like an esports arena yet. I can come and show my admin. This is how simple we can do it. This can, this for right now it can cost X, and our still our kids still feel a sense of pride. We, it, 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 I think when I when I showed y'all that as well, y'all were like, okay, I got a foundation to start off with. I think today was very very hands on, very positive, very eye opening. I think you guys are seeing. Y'all are starting to see some shed of light. We don't, I'm not saying it's at the end of the tunnel because we don't know where the end of the tunnel is, but I think y'all are seeing like, okay, there is some possibilities here. Definitely, definitely.